Today we are going to look at designing a crown in the InLab software. So I'm using InLab software 20 and I have a 4.6 intraoral scan uh, to do a crown. So in the administration phase, under the indications, uh, it defaults to being under restoration and the crown tab. So all that's left uh, to do here is to identify what tooth on the odontogram. As soon as we do so, uh, on the right hand side are the case details. So the case details will identify what tooth we're working on. Uh, and there's a couple additional items in terms of how we can design this crown. Right now I have anatomic selected, so that's telling the software that I'm going to design from scratch a new crown for this uh, patient. The next one is copy. Copy comes in handy if you have a pre-op scan and you want to copy uh, exactly what the patient had pre-existing. Uh, an example of this would be for a partial framework uh, to fit properly. Copy and mirror comes in handy for any of those cases where you want symmetries, especially in anterior teeth. And then one-to-one -one copy is ideal for any really complex uh, cases to do with, you know, things like uh, all on X cases or anything like that, where you want to copy uh, a try-in or a, a wax up. Uh, so then from here, you want to identify the machine. Um, so whether you add in uh, on kind of like a generic device uh, for third-party machines, or if you are using a Densply Serona MCX5 or MCXL, you can identify it as such. And then we can identify the material uh, of our choosing. So here I'm going to select Densply Serona and our Zircon HTML, which is a beautiful zirconium material. And then I'm going to be able to move forward. Now you're going to see that when I move forward, the scan phase is grayed out. And that is because this is a case that I've downloaded from the Connect portal. So an intraoral scan uh, would have been sent to the laboratory at this point. So when that does happen, the scan phase is grayed out. So the first step here is edit model, exactly as the name would suggest. If we need to uh, make any edits to the model, change up anything, uh, we can do so here without issue. Uh, so that's essentially what we're doing here. So we've got the form tool where we can add smooth or remove material from the model. We've got the cut tool where we can cut, tool, uh, cut uh, things out of the actual model itself. Uh, the replace tool, which comes in handy to fill in any small holes. And then reset model is um, basically just resetting the model to its original scan. So here in this next step here where we're doing check occlusion, check occlusion is really looking at the buckle bite scan so we can see the contacts basically of how the patient was articulating when they took the bite scan at the dental office. So this next step here where it says set model axis, a couple key things that we're setting up here is we're lining up our quadrants within the actual arches themselves. So those arches are representing the upper and the lower jaw, of course. Uh, so I typically like to move my upper jaw just being the stationary jaw and then I line up things like my midline and uh, occlusal plane accordingly. This next step here where we're setting the jawline, we're identifying a couple key things, kind of end of the arch. Uh, I go, like to go kind of mesial of the six and then distal of the canine, so kind of corners of the mouth and then midline. Uh, if the adjacent quadrant isn't scanned, I leave it alone. Um, the only time I take care of that is if it is a full arch scan. Uh, the trim model step is an optional step. Uh, what the system essentially does for you is it auto trims to almost look like a removable die. Uh, if you want to take out the adjacent teeth uh, further uh, to make it easier for you to visualize the margins, uh, which is the next step to mark the margins, um, that of course can come in handy, but it is optional. Uh, now when we're working our margins, uh, the software does try to find uh, the margin for you, um, but as well too when it's an intraoral scan, the doctor can mark the margin on their side of the software. Um, so that's what we're seeing here. We're actually seeing the doctor mark their own margin. Um, so if you need to adjust anything, you can. However, if you want to keep it to exactly where the doctor had um, you know, marked their, their own margin, then by all means you don't have to do anything in this step. So the next step here is set insertion axis. So we're about uh, ready to basically tell the software exactly how this is going to be inserted post-manufacturing. So you can either use the arrow on the top, but what I like to do personally is maneuver my model so I'm seeing straight down the path of insertion. And then I go to the right-hand side and I hit apply view direction because that adjusts the arrow accordingly. So it helps to kind of minimize undercuts and things like that as we prepare for designing this crown. Now the very first step of the design phase is always going to be the parameters. Okay, so you're able to set parameters based on what material you're using, uh, based on doctor preference, anything that you might need to do. Um, so it's a really nice way to, of course, be able to just really quickly change any of the parameters that you might need to. Um, now the next step here, adjust morphology. Realistically for a single crown, there's not much that you would have to do here. Um, however, it's basically telling the software that we're going to generate using biogeneric. So we have a large tooth uh, forum that we can choose from uh, in terms of kind of the anatomy and morphology of this, uh, this tooth shape. So I really like biogeneric for that reason. 
it's quite unique to the InLab and Cirrus system. Um, so definitely take advantage of the fact that we can get kind of the most uh, specific design for your patient based on what's in their mouth, um, articulating against it, adjacent to it, all those sort of things. Um, we do, however, have a tooth database where you can choose from a few uh, denture teeth. So that can come in handy if you are, you know, doing a crown next to a denture. Um, however, when it comes to biogeneric, that would be most commonly used um, for just a, a run-of-the-mill anatomic crown. Uh, the change tooth option, this comes in really handy if you are doing any pontic work. Uh, so let's say the pontic, uh, you don't have space for a molar, not a problem. You can tell the software, okay, this is a 4.6, but we want it to look like a premolar. Um, so that comes in really handy when space is a concern, uh, where you can design based on the space that you actually have allotted for that particular case. Uh, so for the positioning step, really for a single uh, crown, really not much that you have to do, but you can move and rotate it. You can scale certain things prior to uh, the software giving an initial design. Uh, but again, that's maybe more relevant for complex uh, bridge work uh, where you want to, you know, kind of specify some positioning prior to designing. Um, but really in the edit element stage, which is where we're at now, the software is going to generate a proposal. Um, so I find that the software does a really great job of generating a proposal right away. Um, so I wouldn't say that there's too much that you have to do initially when you come into the edit element. Um, but a couple key things that you want to look at is um, I always like to look at the morphology of the tooth. Is there anything that you want to change on the morphology of the tooth? Because if, if so, I recommend doing step one as biogeneric variation. But you want to also check out, out things like your contacts, your contour, uh, your occlusion, that sort of thing. So of course, the markings that we're seeing in color, those are the contact points. So we can already tell that this patient has probably a little bit heavier of a bite just based on what we're seeing on the premolars. Um, but we are, of course, at this point able to make any adjustment should we need to. Um, so there's a lot of tools on the right hand side. Uh, you've got the form tool, the move tool, the shape tool the recalculate option, uh, biogeneric variation, the reduce tool, uh, adding a screw channel is available if you wanted to add a screw channel manually to uh, kind of any stock abutment. Uh, you also have attachments where you can um, add in different uh, precision attachments and then you also have the adjust contacts where you can quickly just adjust uh, all your different contacts, um, you know, in terms of mesial, distal, um, occlusion and even dynamic as well once you use the virtual articulator, which I'll show you in a moment here as well too. Um, so with the shape tool that I have turned on right there, um, basically you can use the anatomical, which allows you to kind of pull surface areas. So kind of wherever your cursor is kind of hovering over and then it highlights, that would be the area kind of in question that you're taking care of in terms of how to actually manipulate um, the crown design. Uh, so that's using uh, anatomical. The other option is individual. Um, exactly as the name would suggest, you can kind of individualize the size of the actual tool. Um, so you can really zone in on one specific surface area. Um, so to give you an example, when it comes to um, adjusting the size of it, on the right hand side, you can of course use that arrow, but a shortcut is also to hold your right cursor, move your mouse up and down, and that will also change the size of your tool. Um, so when it comes to the recalculate option, you can basically tell the software, I want to generate a new uh, design here. Uh, but I do like to show off biogeneric variation because it is rather unique to uh, our software. So when it comes to biogeneric, you're able to basically go through a various uh, tooth database in terms of morphologies to settle on one that you like best. Okay, so you can essentially scroll through the different options here where you're seeing the tooth almost do a little dance here. Um, and it's changing the morphology and anatomy kind of on the occlusal surface. But it does change your context as well a little bit too. So I always recommend a step one. First determine is there anything that you want to take care of in terms of the actual uh, design to change anything in terms of the morphology because you never want to get your contacts perfect and then decide that you want to use biogeneric variation because you could lose that contact detail that you just created. So I always recommend a step one if there's anything that you want to change with morphology use biogeneric variation. Now the reduce tool can come in handy. Um, you know, a lot of zirconias nowadays are super aesthetic with multi-layers and things like that. I mean, our Zircon XTML and HTML, really uh, proud of that material for sure. Um, however, you know, there is some sometimes still a need for being able to do a cutback on certain materials. Uh, so with the reduce tool, um, right now what you're seeing is basically the software is highlighting the entire tooth. However, if we wanted to essentially create like a buckle cutback or something like you see me doing here, um, basically I can go on the existing uh, margin. Okay, so you're going to see that the software kind of protects the integrity of the actual margin by going just a couple millimeters above that. Um, and then basically we're able to make an edit to the portion that we're actually going to reduce. Uh, and then on the right hand side, we can actually control the reduction strength in millimeters. So we can determine exactly um, kind of how much room we want to give for our material. Now, if this happens where it inverts the wrong portion, you just say invert selection. Um, and basically now you can see 
exactly what part is highlighted is the area that you're actually going to be reducing. Okay, so uh, at this point, once you hit apply, it'll apply that reduction strength, um, but you can also consider the minimal thickness, which is nice. So if you set a minimal thickness to a certain standard, um, it's gonna try to protect those areas for sure, which is uh, definitely an added bonus as well. Um, so that can be handy for sure when you're doing um, a reduce tool. Now, I'm not gonna go ahead and, and use the reduce tool because I am using um, Circon XTML, which already has really nice uh, kind of incisal translucency and gingival third staining, uh, but it's nice to have that option for sure. So I'm going to bring my lower jaw back here again, and I'm going to now uh, look to adjusting my contacts. So when it comes to adjusting the contacts, when you select distal um, or mesial, what it's going to do is it's going to try to um, basically create those contacts to fit your parameters. So the really nice thing is, is that if you have parameters set to a certain number, it's going to take that into consideration by either increasing the surface area or decreasing that surface area automatically. Uh, now, one thing you might have noticed was that dynamic was grayed out. Um, the reason being is that we need to use our virtual articulator to get all the dynamic function first uh, before we can proceed with actually um, taking care of the dynamic automatic uh, adjustments. So I'm going to take a look at the virtual articulator here as well. Um, but it's a nice way to just quickly adjust contacts based on your parameters. Um, and then additionally here with the form tool, let's say I want to smooth kind of some of my additional areas here. Not a problem. I can kind of go in and just smooth, um, you know, really softly to make sure that I'm not taking away too much material. Okay. Because again, when we're using things like the uh, adjust contacts, it's adjusting your contacts based on what your parameters are set to. So it's still, of course, trying to protect things like minimal thickness and, and that sort of thing. So this is a nice way to be able to adjust it um, as kind of needed. You can kind of look all around here. So now I've, I'm activating the articulation. Um, so with the articulator here, I'm going to click on articulation parameters and it's going to take me to this screen here. Now, this is just a generic kind of universal um, articulator, but at this point, if I wanted to use my own parameters based on your own preference at your laboratory or clinic, not a problem. You can hit OK and it's going to now using the actual restoration, uh, it's going to virtually articulate this case. So we're going to be able to see all the dynamic movement uh, for this particular patient based on the restoration that we've just created. So so once you hit exit articulator, you're going to be able to basically go back to the original screen that we were just on. Um, but again, you're able to change any of the parameters that you see here um, to, to fit your own specifications if you need to. Um, but in just a moment here, you're going to see addi additional options basically here under the articulation parameters. So the first one is uh, the occlusal compass. So if there was any um, dynamic functions, occlusion, protrusion, mediotrusion, laterotrusion, and lateral protrusion that were interfering with this particular restoration, they would show up with that color mapping uh, on the actual tooth itself. So we're actually not seeing any in particular here that are interfering, which is great. Um, however, if we needed to adjust it, now under the adjust contact option, I would see dynamic become available. So I could use the automatic adjustment tool to be able to adjust any of those dynamic movements. Um, but I really like the manual move function under the virtual articulator. It allows you to basically see um, how you can actually manipulate the lower jaw uh, in this case. So it's kind of a neat way to basically be able to actually see how this patient is going to function with it without actually having the patient in front of you. Um, so it's a really nice tool, especially when you're doing any complex cases, um, being able to kind of rely on that dynamic function to ensure that this is going to be a good fitted restoration uh, is, of course, always a, a really ideal scenario. So once you're basically happy, so again, with the adjust contacts here, now you'll see that dynamic is available. So all of them are available. So if there were any dynamic functions that were interfering with this restoration, um, I'd be able to adjust uh, those really easily here. Now I'm looking at my contacts here. They look good. So I can bring my lower jaw back. But essentially at this point here, you're able to move forward to the export phase. Now in the export phase, this is where you're going to be able to either export to in-lab cam if you are using a dense Plicerona uh, milling system. However, if you're not using a dense Plicerona milling system, not a problem, the system is fully open to be able to export as an STL file as well too. So you can continue to use your own system.